when I went to Japan, I went to, it was Battle Arts that I trained at, but it wasn't Battle Arts Academy, it was Battle Arts, one word. And uh, I met Yuki Ishikawa, who's a Japanese professional wrestler, and he was trained by Carl Gotch. And Carl Gotch in Japan is considered the, the, the godfather, pioneer of MMA. So his thing was catch wrestling. And catch wrestling is the, is the nucleus of pro wrestling and MMA in Japan. So when I got there, I'm seeing MMA fighters and pro wrestlers train together in catch wrestling. And then, then they branch off later. And I just love the fact that the pro wrestlers there were training like professional athletes. And their mentality was, this guy in the Olympics, he's an amateur wrestler. I'm a professional wrestler. I got to work harder than them and I'll train them. And they did. And they trained really hard. So we fell in love with this very realistic style. Uh, in, in battle arts rules, there's no pins. It's you know knockout, submission. Um, if you can't stand up to the, the, the 10 count. And I just thought at the time, this is 04, when... MMA is starting to take off. I'm like, this is the future. This is the future of pro wrestling because MMA is becoming so popular. It, it just has to, or else it's going to be a complete disconnect. And, um, you know, one is going to be viewed as completely fake and one's going to be real. But if we want to have that gray zone as opposed to black and white, we can do that. So my guys here, they train in that realistic battle art style and they're trained in, in a classic WWE style match. But the objective is to very effectively mesh the two. When you can do that, there's a lot of money to be made for that person. Because they even tell you when, when, when you're training to be a wrestler, think shoot, like think real, and then work. Uh, so I, I take that to heart, and, and we think real. And I'm pretty hard on the guys. I, I stop a lot, I blow the whistle, I press pause when, when we watch back tape, and I'll show them this is where you lost the audience. That is too fake. And this is where you, you know, you there's a disconnect between your selling and what's uh, proportionate to, to the damage that was done to you and that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, I had to stick to my guns. This is a different philosophy. Not everyone's thinking like this. Uh, and it's paying off. So, I was right. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you uh, the, the, uh, the, the history, the story behind the Cobra. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I was trying to say that for the end, but... Yeah. The Cobra well, was interesting. Okay. So, one of the silent partners in Japan, his name was Taro, and uh, we went out after one of our shows, we went to eat and you know, drinks and that kind of stuff, and he just... He's English, he didn't speak English, basically. And he said, uh, like, you know, watch, watch. And he did this thing with his arm and, and made it into this, like, little wooden Cobra puppet thing. And I remember looking at toy uh, Ishikawa and I'm like, like what, what is that why, why is he doing that he goes, that's a funny thing you know? <laughs> that's it it's a funny thing and that was it man he didn't, next time I saw him he did it again and I, I, I would do it too and we'd laugh ha ha and we have a drink some more beer <laughs> and then I swear man it was like he planted a seed in my brain and then fast forward like five years later I'm at a show I think it was in Atlanta and I look at Cena and I go, hey, watch this, I'm going to try something. So during my comeback, I think it was Carlito. And I'm like, jab, 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 Cobra, bang, he turns around, schoolboy, one, two, three. People immediately laughed in the audience that had never seen it before. Uh, I came back to the curtain, they were laughing, they were like, Cena's like, keep it. And next show I did it, next show I did it, next show I did it. I did it on the road for a couple months till one day I go to TV and Ricky Steamboat was my agent, and I was wrestling somebody, maybe Zack Ryder or something. And he's like, uh, Santino's going to go over with the Cobra, and I'm like, the Cobra? He goes, yeah, Vince wants to see it. He's heard all about it. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then I realized that I'm going to be the perpetrator of the phoniest move in wrestling history. I'm like, damn, well, oh, well. It's a good move. You can do it to anybody at any time. It doesn't matter the size. It's safe. Um... And there, I've had some old timers come up to me and they're like, wish I thought of that damn move. Because they think well, I'd still be working today. And it's true, I can make it, even though I can't wrestle right now with my neck, I can show up to any show and the bully pokes on me, pokes on me and pushes me. And I put the sleeve on, turn around, hit him. I can do that until I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right, it's true, it's true.
Uh, it's amazing to hear, um, uh, you know, the history behind the Cobra and everything in the sleeve. Uh, next to the Cobra, what do you, what, what's your opinion as one of your, your the, probably the, your favorite f special finishing moves from, I mean, could be biased or maybe one of the guys you've worked with, but, you know, as far as, as finishes is concerned. I, I think the most exciting finishing move was the stunner. It was just the way he did it. It was out of nowhere. It, it, it gave the person an opportunity because they were still on their feet so they could jump back and they could make it very explosive and spring out of there. Um, I like my cell of the stunner. I did a salute, which was a tribute to my old character, Boris. They used to do a saluting headbutt off the top rope. So there's a little, little, little shout out to the boys in Louisville that were watching. Um, I think the stunner has to be one of the best. Um, gosh. Pedigree's pedigree's pretty good. Um, what did I get? I mean, Jake the Snake Roberts DDT was awesome. That was you know, anytime you can have a move that's out of nowhere, it's going to be exciting, unless it's a big, elaborate you know setup like the people's elbow and stuff like that. And that's just you know obviously very entertaining. Um, finishing moves are weird. Uh, it's like you have to have one because people want to see it, but it, I think you really shouldn't have one. You know, you watch fighters these days and they'll have 10 wins by knockout, 12 wins by submission, you know, whatever, eight, eight by decision. So I think you should vary up. Also, if you want to get really technical in the, in the, in the, in the, in the mastery of, of a professional wrestling event, um, let's say the first match, they win by schoolboy. Second match, they win by sunset flip. And the third match, they win by O'Connor roll. Now, in the main event, he goes for a sunset flip. Now, you've already proven that a sunset flip can finish a match. So now they're going to bite on it even more. Um, this is pure Rick Rogers' mentality. Um, now he goes for a schoolboy. You've already proven that a schoolboy can win a match. So they're going to be, oh, my God, not again. And they're going to bite on it even more. So if I was going to have a match and I had a crappy match, but I had an awesome finish, they're going to walk away with a good feeling and they're going to think I had a good match. It's the same for a card. If you have five or six matches that are okay, but the main event is kick-ass, they're going to watch it, walk away wanting to come back to that event because they're finishing off with an awesome match. So you got to look at the, the, the entire show like a match. you got to take them on the journey just the same way you do during a match. you got to have a funny spot, a serious spot, a hope spot, an emotional spot, just like on the show. you got to have an emotional match, a funny match, um, you know, an aggressive match, all those different things. Um, Damn, I forget your question, but I hope I answered it. No, that, 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 that does answer, yeah. I, I think we're good. Unless there's anything else you wanted to touch on? I, 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 I had well, one last okay, thing. One Probably want to save it to end. What I wanted to do, if you're cool with it, I just had, the, I, I paired pretty much a couple guys, yeah. uh, wrestlers, and you're just going to tell me who you, who you think would win or, or your, you know, your okay. guy. Okay, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. So it's basically a pair of guys, and you just okay. pretty much. Yeah, I'm gonna who fire. I like, who I like better, or who I, I want to see win? Who would you? Who would think? Who do you think you would win? Who would you want to see win? Okay, kind of okay. Thing. So, um, <laughs> Undertaker, Kane. Ooh, uh, Kane. Hogan, Flair. Hogan. Cena, CM Punk. Cena. Seth, and Roman Reigns. Roman. Triple H, Orton. Ooh. Randy. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. Bret. Goldberg, Brock Lesnar. Brock. NWO, DX. Ooh, DX. Fair enough. <laughs> those <laughs> are hard because <laughs> all those are like, I like both guys. You know? like if you have to pick one. Those are all legends almost. They're all legends. They're all legends. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Sir. That's awesome, man. And there's little reasons for each one. For example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I just know Cena better. Yeah. Um, Brock was a, a an uh, Olympic or an NCAA wrestler, so mm -hmm. I, I wrestled university mm -hmm. at that. You know that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, DX just because I wasn't that was my company. I didn't yeah. work at WCW. <laughs> um, Ro Roman, I just I think Roman is is an absolute stud. His whole mm -hmm. his whole backstory mm -hmm. about. Um, you know, playing for Georgia Tech and getting drafted to the NFL and getting, I think he had leukemia mm -hmm. and overcoming that mm -hmm. and playing for the CF. I mean, his journey is, is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I actually had one more, one more set. Yeah. Rock Stone Cold. 
Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Rock or Stone Cold. Who, if they wrestle tomorrow or in their prime. Oh, man. Or in their prime. Rock, Stone Cold. Who do you got, Santinos? Oh, oh man. man. That, that's the toughest one out of all of them right there. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll say Stone Cold. Only because The Rock made so much money in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, but what's the backstory with Shawn Michaels' Bret Hart? What, what, what's your, um, your take on that, the whole... Yeah, well, the reason I chose uh, Bret is just because he's Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> yeah. um, it's funny. When I was a kid, I, I hated Shawn Michaels as, as a character. Mm-hmm. I just hated him. And then when I learned the craft of wrestling, I go, oh, okay, he's awesome. I get it now. Yeah. And uh, he's, you know, there's a lot of people that consider him the best ever. Mm-hmm. And that is insane because there's been a lot of really, really good wrestlers. Mm-hmm. And um, some of the last matches he had with Taker and stuff, it's like, why are you retiring now? You're better than anybody. But, but uh, yeah, I get it. He, he had a young family and he wanted to get on with his life. Um when, when, when WWE called, uh, I had a trip planned to Tampa with my wife, and, and um, I saw the office call 203, and I go, damn, they're uh, going to call me back to work, and they're going to screw up my trip to Tampa. And it was Mark Carano, and, and uh, he was kind of like, yeah, your contract's going to expire, and, and uh, we're not going to renew it and it's so effectively today. You are being released from your contract. And I was just like, whoa. I was like, well, I guess our trip to Tampa is okay. Um, and there was this crazy feeling of this freedom of this like so this is it the day has come this is life after wrestling you know Um, it's like that it was a complete ending of a chapter and it turned a fresh page and started a new chapter and it was a wonderful chapter nice and neat clean 10 years uh, almost like to the month I think I got hired in August in 06 and my contract expired like in July of, of 16. So it, it was really a nice, clean, crisp 10 years. Um, you know, you always wonder how it's going to be. And it, it was like getting to see, it was like getting to see if there's life after death. But it was the death was, was your career and there's life after death. We'll see now when I really die if there's life after death. That's a different story. <laughs>